the Asus VivoBook Pro 16X OLED. It's a pretty long name with an equally long list of impressive specs. So let's talk about it. Yo, what up YouTube? Thank you so much for taking time to come check out this video. I do hope that you find it useful or helpful or enjoyable in some way. Um, but I wanted to make this video today because we're right on the cusp of the M3 MacBook Pros being shipped. And you know, all the reviewers, all the tech talking heads are probably gonna be talking about the M3 MacBook Pro, uh, and rightfully so. I'm sure it's gonna be a wonderful machine, but it's a wonderful machine that comes at a pretty steep price. You know, for the base model, I think 14 inch MacBook now, um, you're looking at $1,600. And what you get for that $1,600 is an eight core CPU, which I believe is four P cores, four E cores, uh, a 10 core GPU, eight gigs of RAM, and a 512 gig SSD. So that's just the base model. When you spec it up to what you would consider is probably, you know, where a creator laptop should kind of start in 2023. Um, you're looking at the M2 Pro MacBook Pro, which is the one that I purchased, so hopefully I'll have a review for you guys coming up soon on that. But, you know, now you're talking about $22, $23, $2,400 to get to that, you know, base model, you know, real base model for what a creator should be looking for. So that set me about to go look for what could I find and how much would you need to spend to get, you know, something far better, and I stumbled across the VivoBook Pro 16X. And this thing is bonkers for the price. So brand new on Amazon, you can pick this up for $1,800. And if you're not afraid of going to the used or renewed market there on Amazon, I picked this one up for $1,575 basically. So brand new, it's $200 more than the base model MacBook. Picked it up used and it's 25 bucks less. And just for reference, this thing came in it's in flawless condition used. But so for 25 bucks less than the base model, what do you get with the VivoBook Pro 16X? And this thing comes with the i9-13980HX CPU, uh, which is the 24 core i9. So you have eight P cores, 16 E cores in this thing. And it runs at 105 watts and it claims to run at 5.6 gigahertz. And I will vouch for that. In my testing here, I hit 5.58, like I think, gigahertz. So um, those claims are substantiated, at least in my model here. So an amazing CPU. Um, and it also comes with the RTX 4070 GPU and this is a 120 watt RTX 4070. And I know the 4070, when it came out, you know, it was kind of poo-pooed by a lot of people, but that's just tech YouTubers, right? When you have access to every GPU, laptop, computer component under the sun, then sure, maybe the 4070 is a little bit underwhelming, um, but it's not. <laughs> it's an amazing GPU. And if you're coming from anything probably less than an RTX 3070, you're gonna be very impressed with this. I mean, it has the DLSS3, it has AV1 encoding, um, all the sort of features that you would expect from a, a brand, you know, brand new RTX 70 series GPU, it's wonderful. So this model also comes with the 16, uh, 16 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM and a one terabyte SSD, which we'll get into here in just a minute. But that's sort of the big spec. So walking around sort of the exterior part of this, starting with the screen, and this might be one of the, outside of maybe the CPU, this might be the star of the show with this laptop. This has the, obviously OLED, right? It's an OLED panel, which even the MacBook M3 Maxes don't have OLED um, today. So 16 inch, 16 by 10 aspect ratio, OLED screen. Um, it claims to be 120 Hertz refresh rate, 0.2 millisecond response time. And it also boasts 600 nits of brightness, which is important because that's, again, one of Apple's new claims that uh, with the M3 MacBooks, they now can uh, go up to 600 nits of brightness. Well, 
all they'll be doing is joining the Vivo book who's already been there. So 600 nits of brightness on an OLED panel. The thing is awesome. It's a beautiful screen. And um, the entire chassis here, it's plastic. So that's one of the downsides to this. But again, when you're talking about all the specs that are here, you got to cut costs somewhere. The key or the, the chassis is plastic, but it's very rigid. It doesn't feel cheap or soft or flimsy in any way. Uh, it feels really sturdy, um, but that plastic does have its benefits. Now, plastic is a downside, but it does have benefits. And part of that benefit is the uh, reduction in weight. This thing weighs 4.19 pounds. So a 16 inch laptop, 4.19 pounds, and it's only 0.86 inches thick. So it's a relatively thin, but very light laptop for the size. And looking at the keyboard deck here, it does have the full keyboard with the number pad. And you may not be a number pad guy. I don't mind it. I don't look for one, but I find that when I have a number pad, I tend to use it. Um, so it's nice there. It is a bit irritating that the numbers are so close to the enter key and stuff. I find myself, or the, the backspace key, I find myself hitting the numbers a lot when I'm trying to type rather than like the delete key. So that's a bit annoying, but I think it would just take time to get used to. Asus does claim that the keyboard layout is identical to that of a desktop keyboard. So um, you should pick up typing on this very quickly. And the keys are great on this. Um, they have that sort of subtle U shape to the keys that should help drive your fingers to the center of the key to make your typing more accurate. And the keys are great. They're not terribly shallow but they're not overly deep in their travel either. It's kind of, you know, a nice mid-range there and it has a satisfying, you know, snap when you're typing. So I think if you're, uh, you know, someone who types a lot, I think you'd find this to be a very comfortable keyboard to type on. And then going down to the trackpad, this is another one of the stars of the show on this laptop. Nice, big glass trackpad, very accurate. Palm rejection is great. Um, the click is satisfying, but it also has um, the Asus dial. So in this top right, if you see the little white circle there, if you drag down towards the middle, you'll light up the Asus dial pad, drag down again, and it turns the dial pad off. And that dial pad, when you dive into the Asus ProArt software that comes on this laptop, you can customize that dial pad for a whole host of applications. And it's very useful if maybe you're a video editor or a graphic designer, you know, you can customize it for maybe something like side scrolling on a video editor, which is really cool. Um, but you can customize it in a ton of different ways. You can create your own custom keys and hotkeys for it. So, you know, and that's kind of one of the big differences between this, the Vivo Book Pro 16 and like the Pro Art Studio Book or whatever that thing's called. Um, on the Studio Book, the more expensive model that has the physical dial on the keyboard. And I believe that chassis is made of like magnesium alloy or something to that effect. So the components are still the same, still the same CPU, GPU, screen, everything, software. It's just that this one will have the plastic body with the integrated dial pad and the ProArt Studio Book has the physical dial, magnesium alloy. So my opinion, maybe just save some money with this one, um, but the trackpad is awesome. And then um, going around the outside here, this thing has on the, let's see, the right side, you have your micro, or I'm not sorry, micro, your full size SD card, which is UHS-2, which is cool. Um, USB-A 3.2 Gen 1 port, a one gigabyte ethernet LAN port, and your power port. On the left side, you have your audio headphone jack, another USB-A 3.2 Gen 1. You have your HDMI 2.1 and two Thunderbolt 4 ports. So this thing has ports for days, uh, connect everything under the sun that you could want. And what's really cool, I forgot to mention here, what's cool on the Thunderbolt port. So this comes with your standard 240 watt power brick. I'm not gonna show it because it looks like every single 240 watt power brick you've ever seen. But on the um, 
Thunderbolt ports here, they claim that anything 100 watts USB-C charging or higher can utilize the fast charge that comes in this laptop, which is really cool. But the cooler part, they have what they call Asus Easy Charge. So any USB-C charger, a five watt USB-C charger will charge this laptop. Now it's not gonna charge it fast. And if, you know, depending on what you're doing, you're still gonna drain the battery, but it'll slow the drain down. So, you know, if you just bring this on the row with maybe your cell phone and a cell phone charger, 15 watt cell phone charger, whatever it happens to be, you can charge this laptop, which is a really nice feature to help with that portability. Again, being a light, thin laptop, now the fact that you don't have to carry that power brick with you is a super nice touch in my opinion. So now getting inside the laptop, uh, you can see this has two big fans, the five heat pipes, um, but I will point out some negatives inside of the laptop here. So uh, the first negative, it has one M.2 slot. So it comes with a one uh, terabyte SSD, which is fast, it's a fast SSD but you can only upgrade that to two terabytes, which is, you know, for a creator laptop, a bit of a limitation. Now there are easy workarounds with external hard drives and such, but that is a limitation. The other one and the bigger one is this comes with 16 gigabytes of RAM on a single stick. So that's a bit of a bummer right out the box. You're not gonna be able to take advantage of dual um, channel RAM, but that's also easily remedied. You know, you can go buy a single stick of 16 gigabytes of DDR5 and, which is probably where you should be anyways if you're purchasing this laptop. You know, in 2023, a creator laptop really should have 32 gigs minimum. Um, at least if you're talking about the Windows side, you know, Mac, they'll, they'll give you their spiel on what they need. But I would say 32 gigs on the Windows side is probably a good place to be. So again, that's easily remedied, but you do have to shell out some cash for that. And... Then again, you know, it's not a bummer, but no vapor chamber cooling. Again, for the price, you can't really complain. Um, and it does cool very well. Uh, it's the fans and the heat pipes work really well. When I was running my benchmarks and gaming, you know, it was running in the high 70s to low 80s, which is not bad for the CPU, the GPU that this has inside of it. So the cooling works really well and it's not terribly loud. I think on the website, they claim that, um, on sort of standard mode and just sort of your normal everyday use type cases, it'll run less than 40 decibels. And I think that's probably pretty accurate. I didn't measure it, but it's relatively um, unnoticeable when you're just sort of using it. Um, if you put this to performance mode, it's an F15 taken off. So I was running some benchmarks and my son walked by and was like, oh dad, is that you know the laptop that you're testing? I'm like, yeah, he's like, it's really loud. I'm like, yeah, well, in performance mode, again, if you wanna squeeze every bit of performance out of this thing, it's going to be loud. But if you just set it to standard mode, maybe balanced in the window settings, it's relatively quiet for, again, what you get. Now, it's not gonna be silent, uh, but relatively quiet for how much power this thing is packing. So they do a really good job on the cooling and the noise level of this laptop. Um, so what are my overall thoughts? Oh, I'm sorry, let me touch on the battery. I forgot to touch on the battery. So um, it does have a big battery, 90 watt hour battery, which is cool. And in my um, you know, battery test, my little six and a half hour YouTube playback test, uh, I set the screen brightness to 50%, left this in standard mode in the ProArt software and best efficiency mode in the Windows settings. And put it on the six and a half hour YouTube playback and it didn't make it. It didn't make it. Uh, when I restarted the laptop, it died at three hours in. So three hours of YouTube playback at 50% brightness in best efficiency and standard mode. So that leads me into sort of my overall thoughts of the laptop. Um, I think it's awesome. I think the laptop is awesome. For again, the price, you know, 1800 bucks, but if you're not afraid to try use, which again, this came in a flawless condition, um, you know, somewhere between 1600 to $1,800 for a 24 core CPU, 120 watt RTX 4070, OLED panel, 120 Hertz refresh rate, um, all the ports, 
the Asus dial, the ProArt software, and I forgot to even mention the screen is 100% DCI-P3. Uh, I believe they claim less than a Delta E of less than one, so an immensely color accurate screen, of course. So if you're a content creator, creator you can feel comfortable that this is gonna um, you know, give you a true and accurate representation of what you're working on. Awesome laptop for the price. Again, considering what some of the competitors are gonna be coming out with, and what they're gonna be charging, boy, is this, it's hard to beat. Um, but with that, it's not a laptop in the true sense of working on your lap. Um, it doesn't get hot, but again, it's gonna get hot. It's got an Intel i9 and RTX 4070, but the bigger concern, right, is the battery life. Three hours of YouTube playback just means you can't do real work with this thing disconnected from the wall. Uh, but you shouldn't even try. <laughs> if you're buying this laptop, it's not to be a laptop. It is lightweight, it is thin, and it's portable, but that should be portability to move from one connector to the other. Um, this is a desktop replacement in every sense. You know, the CPU, the GPU is fully capable of replacing whatever desktop that you have. And, you know, I think the beauty of it for 1800 bucks I think you could be comfortable with this laptop for the next three to five years. Again, you know, Apple's coming out with their brand new, you know, M3 stuff. They still don't have a screen as good as what this has. So this screen's gonna be good for, you know, ever, but the next three to five years, no doubt. Um, the CPU, the GPU, of course, are super powerful. Um, again, you slap in another 16 gigs of RAM and maybe a two terabyte SSD you've got yourself a beast of a laptop for relatively inexpensive, talking about, you know, 2023 in the United States of inflation, that's not too bad. Um, again, there are some downsides, as with everything, right? There's trade-offs, the plastic body, um, 16 gigs of RAM, battery life, not great, but boy, for what you do get, that's good, it's really good. So. You know, I give it a strong recommendation if you're in the need for a desktop replacement or a laptop to get you running in some creative uh, enterprises. I think this laptop is a home run. So I'll have links down in the show notes if you wanna go maybe uh, give this laptop a look. Um, I'll have some links maybe if you wanna get a nice stick of RAM to throw in here uh, to help yourself out, all that sort of stuff. You use the links, it helps the channel out, it's affiliate links. Um, and while you're down there, maybe consider dropping a like, subscribing to the channel if you found this helpful or enjoyable in any way. That stuff I would certainly appreciate. But otherwise, I think Asus hit a home run with this laptop. Um, love to know what you guys think about it in the comments. But that is all I got for you today. God bless. Mm -hmm.